do. I want to bring in Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, creator of Defending America, of course, dot com. And sir, good day to you. I hope my mother was listening to that comment about smoking and drinking while pregnant. <laughs> that might explain a lot about me. Um, I felt, kidding, I felt a lot of nostalgia last night and again today. What is your reaction on the passing of Barbara Bush at 92? Well, I, I look, I think that she really did become sort of America's grandmother. I think of all the first ladies uh, that I've known of, <clears throat> she had a unique role, uh, partly because she was the wife of one president who'd also been vice president, uh, and then she was the mother of another president. So the length of time she was in public life and the way she handled herself, uh, with a kind of dignity and, and humor, but also a firmness. I mean, she, she represented a generation, uh, the greatest generation, that fought World War II. Uh, she and, her, and George H.W. Bush uh, waited to get married while he went into the Navy, was the youngest uh, naval pilot in the war, uh, was shot down and uh, rescued by an American submarine. Uh, <clears throat> they have saw almost a fairy tale story in some ways. And I think that uh, that came through to people over time so that she became a part of the very fabric. Uh, Clist and I were watching earlier this morning uh, the coverage on Fox and Friends. We were talking about how much, unlike almost any other first lady I can remember, she became part of the very fabric of American life because she, we saw her for so many years and she was consistently Barbara Bush. She, she was never anybody else. She never worried about being anybody else. Uh, and she was very happily uh, both a spouse, a mother, uh, and a public figure simultaneously. Yeah, her funeral is Saturday, and we will have a lot of remembrances over the next several days here. Uh, there's a lot of news to get to. Uh, the Syrian inspectors apparently have been fired on I, uh, from the UN. I, I imagine that's not much of a surprise to you. When you look at the cat and mouse game over the years, not just in Syria, but in Iraq, uh, that's yet to be settled. But this North Korea story with Mike Pompeo going there over Easter weekend, how do we make sure we don't get snookered by Kim Jong un? Why do you laugh about that? Well, well I mean, first of all, here, I'm just thinking about the Democrats in the Senate right now wrestling with whether or not to vote for uh, Pompeo to be uh, Secretary of State. This is a guy who graduated first at West Point, graduated first at Harvard Law School, and just proved he's capable of quiet diplomacy uh, by going as the CIA director to sit down uh, with uh, the dictator of North Korea. Uh, <clears throat> I believe that there's a very real chance that the Trump policy of firmness is leading Kim Jong-un to decide that he actually wants a deal. I think that would be remarkably historic. And I think that uh, having a willingness to meet with him going through this process uh, really opens up possibilities that are very important. And I think, frankly, puts pressure on the Senate to confirm Pompeo as Secretary of State. It's absurd that they're being slow about this. Other people, uh, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry got accepted by Republicans by huge margins because they didn't politicize uh, approving Secretary of State. I would hope today with this news that Democrats would recognize that Mike Pompeo can be a pretty darn good diplomat mm -hmm. and that he's very prepared to negotiate even with the toughest dictator on the planet. Well, I really appreciate your comments today. Thank you, sir, for coming in. Hope to speak to you, you soon, okay? Thank Former you. House Speaker Newt Gingrich right there. Barbara Bush, code name of the White House was? tranquility, mm. which is probably where she is right now, right? My favorite quote, I married the first man I ever kissed. When I tell this to my children, they just about throw up. <laughs>